Welcome back to our Bible study through the book of Daniel. Today we are in Daniel chapter 9. We are getting towards the end of the book of Daniel, and Daniel's visions are picking up. We're seeing uh, more and more visions that he himself is having. And, and today we're going to be looking at one that is dealing with these weeks, 70 weeks or 77s. It says here at the beginning that it's the first year of Darius, the son of Hasherus, a descendant, a descent of Amid. He was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. As in the first year of his reign, Daniel says he he's perceiving the number of of years that the people of Israel were supposed to be in captivity, who are going to be because of the judgment that had come upon them. And he's reflecting back and he remembers that this is 70 years. And he says that he was reflecting upon a prophecy and that Jeremiah had made. And, and so it's getting towards the end of that. In Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 11 to 14, this is what Daniel is reading and he is meditating on. Again, Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 11 through 14, it says, The whole land shall become a ruin and a waste. Speaking of Jerusalem and Israel, he says, And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Then after the seventy years are completed, I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity de declares the Lord, making the land an everlasting waste. Waste. I will bring upon the land all the words that I have uttered against it, everything written in this book, which Jeremiah prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall make slaves even of them, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and the works of their hands. And so that prophecy of Jeremiah, Daniel is now thinking about. It is on his mind. And it says here that uh, Daniel begins to pray and he begins to intercede for the people of Israel. In Daniel chapter 9, he is praying. And let's, let's pick up a little bit of this in verse 4, certain verse 4, and read through a few verses of this. He says, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and he keeps commandments, we have sinned wickedly and we have done wrong and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We have listened to your servants. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, to all the people of the land. To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us, open shame. Daniel is praying for the people. He's praying for Israel because they are struggling in the land, they're struggling back there because of the judgment. But Daniel's praying because they have they've pursued wickedness. They have not pursued the commandments of God. And he says to you, God, this great and glorious God, uh, are, are all of these praises, but to us, he says, we've sinned, we've acted wickedly, we've rebelled, we've turned aside, we've not listened. And he goes on again, picks it up in verse 8. Again, he says, To us, O Lord, belongs open shame. What they were doing was shameful. And he's understanding that, that sinful acts and wickedness are shameful. And they do bring shame upon the person. And so when we stand before God and we're being judged by God or our deeds are being inspected and we're, we're thinking about our lives because of things that we've done, if we are openly rebelling against God, even as a believer, especially as a believer, if you are living in a way that is contrary to the Word of God, and you're rebelling against His revealed truth, when that is revealed to you, you will feel shame because what you did was shameful. We were living in shameful ways, and so therefore we feel shame. The the, glory, the great thing is, and Daniel knows this, and he prays, and he tell, asks God, he pleads with God. He says, let your anger and your wrath turn for your sake, O Lord. Daniel is appealing to the mercies of God and the grace of God. He realizes that what his people have done, what he has, and he is saying that he's a part of that. He is a part of the nation Israel. Daniel is the one who's standing for God and seeking after God, but he understands the wickedness of his nation, and he feels a oneness and a bond to them because he is one with them, even if 
He didn't live as they did. But now this, this wickedness that they have been uh, indulging in, it's, it's shameful. It's, a, it's a, a very shameful thing that needs to be repented of. And he's crying out to God because the 70 years that Jeremiah had prophesied about was about to come to an end. Well, now enters this unique vision, which we're just going to outline a little bit and not try to give all manner of explanation of it. But Daniel has a vision and it says that Gabriel comes to him and he comes to Daniel to give him insight. And he has this vision of the 77s or 70 weeks, depending upon the translation that you read. Now, most people agree, most people in the interpreters agree that these weeks are to be interpreted as, uh, as individual years. So, so it's 70 sevens, 70 groups of seven years, and so 490 years. And, and so he begins to talk about this, and he groups them up as, a se- as seven weeks, 62 weeks, and then one week. So you have the 70. And in these, he begins to talk about, Gabriel begins to express to him and reveal to him that these are going to be about Jerusalem, about the finishing of their transgression that Daniel was appealing for them about because of their wickedness. It's going to be talking about an end of all sin and that God is ultimately going to atone for uh, the iniquity, and this is concerning Christ. It's going to be talking about bringing everlasting righteousness, again, concerning Christ. So you first have these seven, you have these seven weeks, then these 62 weeks, and then the one week. And the way they are, what they are addressing is different times and the ways that God is going to be bringing about judgment and talking about uh, princes and, um, and rulers and different nations and, and judgments that's going to come upon them, as well as judgments that's coming upon the people of Israel. And in the end, though, it's talking about the, the restoration of all things. Well, we're going to continue on next time in Daniel chapter 10. We're going to touch back a little bit about Daniel chapter 9 next time, and, but then we'll continue in Daniel chapter 10, which leads right into Daniel 11, which are covering the same thing. So we'll see you then.